Chapter 24, Thirst. The thirst of a thoughtless man grows like a creeper. He runs from life to life like a monkey seeking fruit in the forest. Whomsoever this fierce, poisonous thirst overcomes, in this world his sufferings increase like the abounding barana grass. But from him who overcomes this fierce thirst, difficult to be conquered in this world, sufferings fall off like water drops from a lotus leaf. This salutary word I tell you, do ye as many as are here assembled, dig up the root of thirst as he who wants the sweet scented ursina root must dig up the barana grass that Mara, the tempter, may not crush you again and again as the stream crushes the reeds. As a tree, even though it has been cut down, is firm so long as its roots are, is safe and grows again. Thus, unless the feeders of thirst are destroyed, this pain of life will return again and again. He whose 36 streams are strongly flowing in the channels of pleasure, the waves will carry away that misguided man, viz. his desires which are set on passion. The channels run everywhere. The creeper of passion stands sprouting. If you see the creeper springing up, cut its root by means of knowledge. A creature's pleasures are extravagant and luxurious. Given up to pleasure and deriving happiness, men undergo again and again birth and decay. Beset with lust, men run about like a snared hare, held in fetters and bonds. They undergo pain for a long time again and again. Beset with lust, men run about like a snared hare. Let therefore the medicant drive him out by striving after passionless for himself. He who having got rid of the forest of lust, i.e. after having reached nirvana, gives himself over to forest life, to lust, and who, when free from the forest, from lust, runs to the forest, to lust. Look at that man, though free, he runs into bondage. Wise people do not call that a strong fetter, which is made of iron, wood, or hemp. Passionately strong is the care for precious stones and rings for sons and a wife. That fetter wise people call strong, which drags down, yields, but is difficult to undo. After having cut this at last, people leave the world free from cares and leaving the pleasures of love behind. Those who are slaves to passions run down the stream of desires as a spider runs down the web which he has made himself. When they have cut this at last, wise people go onwards, free from cares, leaving all pain behind. Give up what is before, give up what is behind, give up what is between, when thou goest to the other shore of existence. If thy mind is altogether free, thou wilt not again enter into birth and decay. If a man is tossed about by doubts full of strong passions, and yearning only for what is delightful. His thirst will grow more and more, and he will indeed make his fetters strong. If a man delights in quieting doubts, and always reflecting, dwells on what is not delightful, the impurity of the body, he certainly will remove, nay, he will cut the fetter of Mara. He who has reached the consummation, who does not tremble, who is without thirst and without sin, he has broken all the thorns of life, this will be his last body. He who is without thirst and without affection, who understands the words and their interpretation, who knows the order of letters, those which are before and which are after, he has received his last body. He is called the great sage, the great man. I have conquered all, I know all. In all conditions of life, I am free from taint. I have left all, and through the destruction of thirst, I am free. Having learnt this myself, whom should I indicate as my teacher? The gift of the law exceeds all gifts. The sweetness of the law exceeds all sweetness. The delight in the law exceeds all delights. The extinction of thirst overcomes all pain. Riches destroy the foolish, 
if they look not for the other shore. If foolish by this thirst for riches destroys himself, as if he were destroying others. The fields are damaged by weeds. Mankind is damaged by passion. Therefore, a gift bestowed on the passionless brings great reward. The fields are damaged by weeds. Mankind is damaged by hatred. Therefore, a gift bestowed on those who do not bring hate brings great reward. The fields are damaged by weeds. Mankind is damaged by vanity. Therefore, a gift bestowed on those who are free from vanity brings great reward. The fields are damaged by weeds. Mankind is damaged by lust. Therefore, a gift bestowed a gift bestowed on those who are free from lust brings great reward. We must meditate and concentrate on thirst. Let us move on to chapter 25. 